This lecture, we'll talk about how you identify an opportunity that fills a gap that the market is not currently satisfied. The current players in the market aren't satisfying a particular aspect of market demand. So here's an example of a gap in a marketplace. Chis Shavolo realized that she liked the musician, liked to play guitar in particular. She realized that all of them were kind of built for men, you know, length of arms and the like. Uh, so she started Daisy Rock Guitars, which is a company that makes guitars for women and girls. A different, there's a need, wasn't being served appropriately, so therefore you create a business around it. Uh, uh, the, in, the increase in uh, interest in women's soccer, another opportunity, maybe people aren't, the big companies aren't serving it well, opportunity, again, to start a business or to work in a certain area. The, the, the market doesn't necessarily react quickly because of some of the conservative elements of existing companies we talked about before. So you might have a, comp a gap that develops in the market because of trends or changes in demographics or economics. You see a gap, creates a problem for people, you solve that problem. It's really all the same process, but three different ways to look at it. Changes are happening all the time. That creates problems for people because they're trying to use new technologies, but they're not fully developed. So you might want to build something that associates that's associated with that because the bigger companies haven't yet got to that or their bureaucratic process has slowed them down. They're waiting to see what happens. You jump in, you build a business. This is how opportunities get, get turned into businesses in the entrepreneurial world. Things to keep in mind about the market demand curve. There are different Buying behaviors in different parts of the curve. Typically, people that want to purchase something that's new, that fills a gap, they have a problem, they see a solution, they actually want to help design the solution a little bit. They're more forgiving of uh, operational errors and the like. Um, they're also less price sensitive at the beginning of this curve. But over time, as more and more people adopt the product and service, they tend to be more comparative, comparing what other people offer of similar products, so the margins come under downward pressure. One of the reasons people want to cont continue to innovate and have the latest technology, like new Apple phones, new iPhones, because people are willing to continue to pay higher prices because early adopters are willing to, they want the latest and they need to be um, on the leading edge and they're less price sensitive. But after a certain period of time, everybody has one, so what do you do next? And that's when you get um, a much ma a more mature marketplace. Generally, startups are better at this front end of the curve because there's not a lot of competition out there. You're early in the market, not necessarily first. You can still follow, but you're second or third, and you're developing the product that solves people's needs and makes them feel like they're getting the kind of product they want it's sort of customized towards their need and they're willing to pay a little extra for it, which gives you a little bit more breathing room as you think about building your business around, uh, around this, uh, this market niche that you've identified because eventually other people are going to come in. So you want to establish your position and your customer base as you go forward. That's the, how to think about how the marketplace, the market dynamics relate to entrepreneurship. You generally come in at the beginning, hold your position, and try to continue to innovate.